Blythe the Spirit by Noel Coward is probably one of Coward's more well-known shows. Uh, he, it's basically about an author named Charles Condamine who had a wife who had passed away about seven years prior to the action of the play. Uh, since then he has remarried his second wife Ruth. Uh, the play takes place as Charles and Ruth decide they're going to host a seance. Charles has decided that his next novel will be about a homicidal medium and so he decides to invite the local medium, Madame Arcati, into his home to kind of get some tips and pointers on what exactly goes on in a seance. Uh, he's looking for the terminology, as he says. Uh, well, what happens is Madame Arcati, completely by accident, ends up summoning the ghost of his first wife, Elvira. As Elvira can only be seen by Charles, Elvira decides to make a lot of trouble for Charles with both he and his wife. It is a comedy. Uh, that is one thing I think a lot of people uh, w would like to know, and a lot of people are interested in comedies. Um, when I was talking to somebody about the show, they specifically asked, it's a comedy, right? Because with a description like that, ghost of first wife comes back to haunt husband and second wife, that could go either way. Uh, it is definitely a comedy, though. It is very funny. It is very clever. One of the reasons that I was first attracted to uh, Blythe Spirit is, one, Noel Coward is one of my favorite playwrights. Uh, he's very witty. He's very verbose. Uh, and the language itself is almost a character in his shows. Because though that language is so intense and that language is so, such a key part of the production, it puts a lot of strain on the actors. It is a farce. Um, one of the, it's called an improbable farce in three acts. For those people who've been longtime attendees uh, of our theater here in Dodge City know, uh, a lot of farces are things like uh, Ray Cooney. There's lots of slamming doors, there's lots of slapstick, there's lots of action. The, this isn't that kind of farce. Uh, yes, there are cases of mistaken identity and some of the standards you see in a farce, but again, it relies much more on the language of it and how these very clever characters interact. You know, one of the things I really have to commend my cast for, again, is the amount of work that has to go into something like this. Uh, the, the language, it, it's so important. It's written in a very specific way, and it, it was written in the 1940s in Britain. And so it's written in a style and a syntax and a manner of speaking that, you know, as people from the Midwest and modern day America, we're not quite used to that kind of phraseology. And so it, it takes a little bit. It takes a little bit to get into character and to figure out where you're going and, and to, to get a hold of the language and to really get the message across in the way that the playwright attended while still taking ownership of the character yourself. I can't thank the cast enough for their work ethic. You know, that's, this is three acts of just heavy, heavy dialogue. I mean, pages upon pages of just interaction and tete-a-tete -tete and back and forth and then soliloquies and monologues and just, it, it really, for the show to work, it has, the lines have to be down pat, more so than some other shows, perhaps. And they've really stepped up to the plate. They came in on weekends, they came in uh, over Thanksgiving break, uh, they've made a huge sacrifice both through personal, their personal lives and their, and their time to really make sure that these, again, these characters are inhabited, fully inhabited characters. Because you know, really at the end of it, what we want people to walk away with is being entertained. You know, you, you can claim that you have meaning to a show, you can claim that you have all these other things you want to do, but really at the heart of it, the goal is for someone to walk out of here and just say, wow. Wow, that was amazing. I just, you know, for, for two and a half hours, I sat there and I was thoroughly entertained. You know, more than anything, I just really hope people come out and enjoy themselves. You know, I really think the goal, the goal, like I say, is to entertain. Um, we want everyone to come and spend their, their holidays with us. It's a great place to bring family, a great place to bring friends. We have a great lobby area that's absolutely gorgeous right now. And you can come and you enjoy a live show.